All right, so good evening everyone and welcome to Take Charge for May of 2019. So everybody knows that we like to talk about all the things that make up a heart healthy lifestyle. We've had a number of sessions on all these wonderful topics. We talk about stress, we talk about sleep, we talk about nutrition, of course, exercise is a big one as well. So we talk about aerobic training, getting your walking in on a regular basis. We've had a number of sessions talking about weight training. And everybody knows that weight training is an important part of cardiac rehab. It's in the Canadian, the American, and the European cardiac rehab guidelines. You gotta lift your weights. Well, another very important part of leading a heart healthy lifestyle is making sure that you stretch on a regular basis. Helps decrease injuries, helps you feel better, function better. There are a lot of quality of life improvements that come with stretching. And that's gonna be our topic for today. So our speaker today is Errol Kamina. Errol is um, a certified personal trainer who works with Body and Soul. We've all met Body and Soul. They've been working with our graduate group for a number of years now. And Errol is gonna make a really good case for why we all should be stretching on a regular basis to make sure that we stay as heart healthy as we possibly can. Errol, thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. Uh, it's my first time here. I uh, didn't realize how large this facility is, so I kind of got lost. And thank you very much for kind of showing me around. Uh, so again, thank you for coming. Uh, like the most awkward part of presenting is kind of like figuring out who the presenter is. So I hate talking to myself. I, I'm really boring, so I'll kind of give you like a real description of kind of who I am and how I can potentially benefit your life. So. First off, I'm a former gymnast uh, back in, uh, anyone heard of Yugoslavia? Back in, a, oh, okay, okay. For, any Yugoslavians here? Anyone here speak Serbian or Macedonian? Okay. So I was born, raised in Macedonia. Uh, back then it used to be called the former Yugoslav Republic of Macedonia. Now it doesn't exist anymore. So it taught me how to do gymnastics. My dad was a, uh, I believe the two-time heavyweight champion boxer way back in the day. So you kind of taught me exercise, the importance of exercise, and I've been exercising for a very long time. Uh, again, I was a former amateur boxer. I was a really terrible boxer, maybe because I realized that I didn't like being punched in the face. Uh, I realized I was smarter than most boxers, so I decided to quit, and here I am. Uh, I decided to go into massage therapy. Uh, also realized at a young age that as a 20-year-old man, you're not gonna massage into people that you think you're gonna massage. Then I realized that massage is not my thing, and I kind of got into more strength training. Okay, uh, I've been doing this for about 13 years. I've been training for 20 years, so I have kind of like a broad spectrum of understanding of exercise. Um, I specialize in rehab, prehab, and movement quality. So I have a few clients of mine who are in their 70s who can do 20 pull-ups. Uh, they can deadlift two times their body weight. They can lunge, they can swim, they can play with their grandkids, and uh, they realize the benefits of exercise and stretching. They're still quite stiff. They complain all the time that they're stiff, but they keep doing it. So that's why I love my job. Uh, I also specialize in Olympic weightlifting and calisthenics. Anyone heard of Olympic weightlifting? The concept of it? Ever watched the Olympics? No one? Yeah. Okay, okay. Uh, I'm also an avid reader. I like to read about one book a week. Um, try to be as educated as I possibly can. I was here, when I first came here, I was a um, refugee, so I realized that here I am in this beautiful country, I have so much to do. Huh? Red Riding Hood? <laughs> Red Riding Hood, way back in the day? Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, also, I speak, uh, I'm fluent in Macedonian, Serbian, Bulgarian. I used to speak Russian, but I completely forgot. If you don't use it, you lose it. I'm currently learning Japanese because I want to get away from the mother tongue of Slavic languages. Otherwise, like I said, I'm pretty darn boring. Uh, a lot of my clients and a lot of my uh, friends make fun of me because I've never seen one episode of Game of Thrones. Not a single one. You knew, okay, see? We get each other, okay. See, I, I've never seen it. And unfortunately, I've also never watched a single game of the Raptors and I'm not a bandwagoner, so I'm not gonna jump on right now. Uh, so that's pretty much me. And again, I'm really quite boring. Um, if you talk about anything, you let me know. Okay, so we'll get into it. Uh, first, we'll talk about the agenda. So I'd like to kind of give people a brief understanding of what we're gonna be doing. And as a presenter and also as someone who's been in a lecture hall before, I try to really spare everyone too much technical jargon. We're gonna skip through very quickly because I know that as also a participant, I'm not gonna remember most of it anyways, right? So it's gonna be about 15, 20 minutes. If you have any questions, we can 
feel them afterwards. So today we're going to talk about the difference between flexibility and mobility. It is not the same. Sometimes we use that interchangeably. It is not the same. We'll explain as to why that is and why you should be doing it. Uh, how will this impact your life? Uh, anyone here have a hard time putting on their socks? No? Yes. Yeah, sometimes? Okay. Okay. Fair enough. Like putting on like clothing sometimes could be a, a real issue, right? You think that's important, right? You want that to be able to do it on a regular basis so you don't feel like you could rely on someone else. Could you please put on my shoes or socks, right? So keep that in the forefront. This is what I mean by how it's going to impact your life. We need to do it just like brushing your teeth. I don't wake up in the morning. I really wish I can go and brush my teeth tomorrow, right? But it's got to be done. Uh, the different modalities of stretching, again, quite technical. I'll give you all the information as what it is. Uh, we always come back to the most basic stuff, which is static stretching, uh, which I believe everyone here has done, because everyone here is a graduate, correct? Perfect. Uh, so we'll talk about when you should stretch, when to mobilize, how long to do it, the frequency, and which is the right for you, specific to your individual needs, okay? Uh, I also got some tools, some, you know, torture devices we could kind of use. I'll demo as well if someone's interested. Ever, everyone seen this before? Yes. yes? Mostly you look like completely glazed over. You're like, what is that thing? That's fair. Oh, we use a stick. We also have a lacrosse ball and a lacrosse stick. Uh, something we'll talk about, something called stretching under load, which is a big fan of mine. Uh, talk about strength training, how to actually stretch while strength training so you can get the best bang for your buck. You can do both. Uh, and last thing is the practical applications of stretching and mobility on the track, which we're going to do afterwards, and then we'll take some Q&A afterwards. If you have any questions, like a burning question, please let me know. I will field it to you right now. Okay. Any questions before we start? No? Okay. So, I like to kind of get the uh, people kind of interested here. What is stretching and what is mobility? What's your understanding of stretching? Like, when you guys think of stretching, what do you guys think of? Stretch, yeah, so like you get out of bed, you kind of do a little yawn, right? What else comes into your mind when you see, think of stretching? Touching your toes. There you go, there you go, it's a stretch. That? Touching, your, touching your toes. We also think of like yoga, right? So when we think of yoga, like okay, everything is slow and controlled, they go through full range of motion, it's just mostly yoga. But mobility is a little different, right? So when you think of mobility, what do you guys think? Yeah. Huh? Balance. Balance, sure. What else? Pain. Pain. <laughs> okay. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I think we need to help you out, my dear. It's fair. Okay. I mean, it could be pain, yeah? Because obviously you have issues in your joints, right? So you might feel discomfort, right? Anyone else can think of what mobility might be? Think of sports. What sports when you guys, when you're a youth or even now? Walking. Walking? Sure. Tennis. Tennis, there we go. Squash. Squash, that's a tough sport. You go, girl. Tai Chi, exactly. Hmm? Aquafit. is actually fantastic, just so you guys know. If you guys have ever done Aquafit, I love Aquafit. I think it's fantastic. It's really good for your bones, right? So, a lot of things could be in terms of mobility, right? So, mobility is like literally how you move through space, right? So, think of flexibility as like you holding that stretch or touching your toes, right? Now mobility is like literally able to get out of bed, get yourself dressed, not relying on someone to help you out. That's what I think of mobility. From a real practical perspective, that's what mobility really is. Taking through a full range of motion, mostly at the joint though, not at the muscle. Does that make sense, right? Because like my job is to educate you is because sometimes we use those two words so interchangeably and they're not quite the same, okay? Okay. So, here's the difference between flexibility and mobility. Now, if you do a combination of both, you get stability. Okay, so the muscles and the tendons and the ligaments around that joint and the muscle become stable. So, let's say if you're going up a flight of stairs or down a flight of stairs or down a hill, you should feel very strong and supported. Okay, so, flexibility is the ability of a muscle or muscles right, like the hamstrings, it's plural, it's more quadriceps, plural, uh, it, to lengthen or elongate, right? So if you look at yoga practitioners, they can go through a full range of motion, they're only moving their muscle themselves, right? So stretching of the muscle of the hamstrings is usually done in a static or held position, but not always, we'll get to that in a second. Mobility, however, is the ability for a joint to move actively through a range of motion, like I said, so like, 
getting dressed, walking into your car, that would be considered mobility, right? Because you're going through a full range of motion. Uh, stretching or mobilizing is usually done in an active and full range of motion, such as an overhead squat, right? So like even just like sitting down, nice deep squat, right? Be able to move through a full range of motion is considered mobility. Any questions there? Pretty simple. Okay, so now the technical part. I'm sorry I'm gonna dull you a bit, but it's, you gotta at least understand what it is first. Uh, I'm gonna show you some of the things you should not be doing, different types of stretching that you see your friends do all the time. And hopefully when you leave here, you should feel somewhat educated, you can at least let them know that maybe you should be doing that. Do this instead. So we'll go through ballistic, dynamic stretching, active stretching, passive stretching, PNF. That's usually done usually with like a therapist or a trainer. Uh, I can show you guys briefly how to do that as well, but it's mostly done with uh, some kind of professional. Uh, South mouth fascial release, all, AKA the poor man's massage. Again, going back to the massage therapy, that's what it's called, the poor man's massage because it doesn't cost much and you get a massage. Uh, and then stretching under load, and that's more strength training, right? So I will leave that to whoever you're working with to kind of get you over, okay? Okay, so my first and most favorite one, back in the 60s and 70s, ballistic stretching was considered like the normal. Had anyone heard ballistic stretching? Ever heard a concept? Yes. Kin, fellow kin students, yeah. thank God. Okay, so ballistic stretching consists of trying to force part of the body in, in its normal range of motion by bouncing into a stretch position. So best way to think about it is, you guys know who that is? Ms. Jane Fonda herself, right? So she was the queen of ballistic stretching. She had no idea what she was doing, unfortunately. It caused a lot of people injury. So think of like this, so like, she, you know, she did a classic Jane Fonda thing and to go super fast, right? But it's very, very explosive, very, very quick. And a lot of people got injured, right? So do not do ballistic stretching. I'm gonna tell you right now, if you want an injury, I would go ahead and do so. But if you can, really try to avoid it. Uh, and again, this will lead to significant injuries. Now, static stretching is like our bread and butter. Uh, it is the most common type of stretching. It usually lasts about uh, 30 seconds to a minute, up to two minutes, depending on the individual, to the point of tension and not pain. And we generally just stretch the muscle itself, not the joint, okay? Generally. Any questions about that? Pretty simple, right? Okay. So here's where it gets a little complicated. And like I said, I, I would love to just kind of give you the information. Doesn't mean that you can do this. Uh, you might see your family members, your grandchildren. They like to do this as well. A lot of ballet dancers do this as well. Just a good understanding. Okay, so anyone heard of active stretching or passive, those concepts? Yeah, see, good, <laughs> I get to learn something. Okay, so active stretching. Active is an isolated movement. Stretching consists of assuming a position then holding it there with no assistance. Uh, other than the strength of your muscles. So you supply the force, right? So if you actually look at this photo right here, she's actually pulling her leg up to hold that position using her own muscles, right? She's not holding herself. You can do obviously a, a, a huge regressed version of these very easily, but there's also another way to actually improve strength. It's very difficult and usually lasts about 10, 15 seconds, okay? Now passive is the opposite of that. You can get into a position and you can pull yourself using an apparatus like a strap or someone pushing it down, it's considered passive stretching. So you can go past the range of motion. Uh, you only do this if you're really, really comfortable stretching, if you've done it for a long time. And again, something I wouldn't recommend right away unless you're uh, working with a professional. Okay. Okay, dynamic stretching is uh, one of my favorites. Um, I did this with everybody. So, Think of like athletes, let's say you watch them on the Olympics and you see them kind of moving around, usually in a very controlled manner. So they might step, they might kick, right? So they might move their arms, they might do a lot of circular rotation. That's considered dynamic stretching. So I prefer this uh, for most of my uh, clients after a circuitary warm-up, of course, to make sure the tissues are warm, make sure they're nice and uh, relaxed and lubricate the joints. You start doing this first, then what happens is you start getting more range of motion, right? Lubricates the joints, reduces chance of injury. Uh, it's not for everyone, so depending on your level of fitness, you, this might not be right for you, 
but generally for the clients that I usually work with, we do some sort of uh, dynamic stretching that's good for balance and stability as well. So if they're walking around and they're hinging and try to touch their toes, there's still some sort of stretch, but there's a stability component as well and a strength component. Uh, Peanut stretching, again, uh, I put it in here just because it's good to know. Uh, this is mostly with a therapist or uh, some kind of professional, either a trainer, fascial stretch therapist, or a physiotherapist, even Kairos. They can do this as well. Uh, anyone done this before with a therapist? Yep. Okay. It, it kind of feels like magic, to be honest with you. When they, when they apply force for about six seconds, you can go into an increased range of motion right away and everyone's eyes bugs out. Meanwhile, it's just like it's a very easy way of like, kind of like uh, how should I describe it? It's almost like tricking your body, thinking it can go past its range of motion. Uh, if anyone wants to learn how to do this, uh, please let me know. Obviously, let me know about your health background, see if it's the right thing for you. But it, we can show you today as well. Okay. If you have an injury, you should be doing that PNF stretching. It depends. It depends on the severity of the injury, but yes, usually you start with. If you have with a broken femur, you wouldn't do it. If you're broken fever, a fe yeah. femur? Yeah. You can, you can stretch, it depends. Again, it, it depends if you're clear to exercise. If your uh, physiotherapist or your doctor says you can stretch, there should be no problem. Uh, again, it depends on situation. So I might, get, I might say that a lot, it depends. It's so individual, and that's why it's called personal training, because everyone is very much independent on the individual. It's a good question, though. Yes, sir? What's the PNF mean? Oh, <laughs> I didn't want to bother putting it into it because it's such a long name, but I will answer your question. Proprioceptive neuromuscular facilitation. So PNF for short. <laughs> Is that fair? <laughs> uh, so again, it's basically you're just like tricking your body, thinking you go in past its normal range of motion. Uh, I often do this a lot in uh, seminars, and they think I'm like this amazing person. Meanwhile, I just understand anatomy. It's very, very cool. Okay. Any other questions? Okay, so self myofascial release or just myofascial release. It's a very simple thing. Uh, a lot of people um, really enjoy it because again, it's called the poor man's massage. So all it is, is just you're literally kind of massaging the muscles, not really the muscles, something called fascia. But I'd rather not get too into into that because it gets really kind of complicated. So fascia is like a deep connective tissue, right? It's, it's alive, it gets on nerve endings, and it's as strong as steel. So it's a really, really strong connective tissue. Sometimes what happens is um, it gets kind of taut. If I could kind of explain it in a very simple way, imagine they're kind of like this, and almost like kneading the dough, right? So you kind of knead the dough, and it eventually unravels, and you start feeling better, right? So usually we do simple things like foam roll your feet, your hamstrings, sometimes you can go into the glute area. Uh, I would avoid like lumbar, any kind of like low back area. You might see a lot of people on the, in the gyms do this a lot. It's, it's very relatively safe. Uh, obviously you need some sort of training just to kind of understand how much force to apply, uh, how long to do it for, so on and so forth. But it's very, very easy to use. You can use um, foam roller, lacrosse balls, tennis balls, I've even had people who, let's say, they couldn't afford it or didn't have time. They had those like uh, diced tomato jars, you know, like the from like Food Basics. It's super firm. You just lay on top of it and roll back and forth. It still works. Even like a basketball, anything works as long as it's firm and dense. Okay. Uh, and then the last thing we'll talk about is uh, stretching under load. Technically, it's just more of a contraction, uh, but again try to keep it kind of on the basic side. I'll tell you exactly what that means. So basically what you're doing is you're like lengthening muscle while strengthening at the same time, right? So if that's right for you, uh, depending on your doctor. Okay. <coughs> okay. So that was just the basics of all the types of stretching. I still think static is the best and we'll, talk, we'll do a lot of static stretching today. So, Best practices for flexibility and mobility training. So we're going to talk about how long to stretch, the frequency, uh, what type is best for you as an individual as opposed to uh, generally. All right, if anyone has questions, you let me know. So we always start off with a cardiovascular warm-up. I believe everyone here, like I said, is a, a graduate from the cardio rehab, so you're very familiar with the cardiovascular program. So we always start with a cardiovascular warm-up, about 7-10 minutes. It could be a light walk, 
It could be a jog, it could be whatever. Uh, it could be on a bike, it could be anything, as long as you get your heart rate up. Elliptical? Elliptical, whatever. Uh, you can do a rower if that's good for you as well. Uh, everyone have their own preference on which machines they're on. Does everyone still do their cardiovascular training? I hope. No, yeah. Just the one, I, I saw the one there, mm, okay, fair enough. So basically you just pick any particular uh, equipment you like to use and then stay with that for about five to seven minutes. The reason why we do that is we want to increase the temperature of the muscle, right? So it also helps lubricate your joints. So when you go into stretching, there's less chance of injury. If you go into a stretch routine when your body's cold, there's a higher chance of injury. I'm not saying you will injure yourself, but there's a higher chance of injury. Does that make sense? Okay. Second thing is uh, if you can do it, perform a dynamic warm up, right? So that could be as simple as like an arm swing, right? You can do a knee tuck, right? You can do a toe touch. If that's safe for you, please do so as well. It's one of my personal favorites for most of my clients, like I said. Uh, so the next is you just stretch under load. And again, that's the contraction I was telling you about. If you are cleared for any kind of weight bearing or resistance exercise, I would highly recommend doing this, right? So even like, let's say like a stationary lunge, right? Even that alone, you're strengthening one leg while lengthening the other, creates stability, but there's actually a huge, huge stretch at the bottom of the, of the opposite hip. So that's what I mean by stre stretching under load. You can use eccentric contraction, you can use almost anything, but it's simple to just say stretch under load, okay? Only do that if you're cleared to strength train, okay? Now, uh, if you're not clear for resistance training, then you can utilize static or passive stretching for 30 seconds to 60 seconds, sometimes up to two minutes if you're especially tight. But again, to the point of tension and not pain, okay? Sometimes people stretch way past because they think it's really good for them, and then they end up actually hurting themselves. So you should always stretch to the point of tension and not pain, okay? Uh, and then utilize uh, self mild fascial release. Uh, if you do have availability, let's say like a lacrosse ball, a foam roller, what have you. Any questions there? Pretty simple, right? For the most part. Okay. Okay. So, one thing I have to throw in just because you guys have already done this before. You guys had a speaker talk about strength training? Well, we talked about it in the past. In the past, okay. So, this is something that I talked with everybody, uh, including my mom, who is a uh, former um, farmer. I'm a farmer as well, so we have that farm strength. Uh, she's 64 years old, strong as an ox, this big. She's about 4'11", maybe 4'10". Uh, she can do four chin-ups. She can carry like 60 pounds on either hand. Still take care of, takes care of my kids and my brother's kids, so she's just like a, a powerhouse. And, my favorite person in the whole world. So I keep telling her, you gotta strength train, you gotta take care of yourself, because I want to see her for as long as possible. So the research has shown that uh, the more you strength train, combine that with cardiovascular training and uh, mobility work or flexibility, you can get these five things. It will increase your, your life, longevity, but also the quality of your life. So you don't have to rely on, let's say, a PSW or someone to help you go around do your day-to-day -day tasks. It's pretty important, right? Able to have that individuality to feel like you're completely and utterly take care of yourself without someone uh, taking care of you. So the first and foremost is maximal strength. So the stronger you are, less chance of injury, right? So you can go up a flight of stairs. Um, you can pick something up without the risk of injury, right? The stronger you physically are, the better it is. Next one is maximal muscle. So the more muscle you have, obviously the healthier you'll be. Uh, then unfortunately, there's like this kind of like dogma that sometimes, especially with the female population, they're like, I don't want to have too much muscle. I'll turn to a She-Hulk or something of that nature. Uh, I do think that muscle mass is extremely important, especially as we age. And for the longest time, we thought that as we age, we can't build muscle. It's actually proven correct. We can build muscle almost at any age literally any age. You have people that are like 91, 92, they can still put on some muscle mass. So never ever say that it's too late so you can't teach dog old tricks or something that some of my clients might say. You should always focus on strength training. Now the other one is uh, cardiovascular fitness, right? So the more aerobically fit you are, the longer your lifespan, right? So if you go flight of stairs, you're aerobically fit, 
your heart rate isn't as high, so your heart doesn't work as hard, right? So think about that for a second, right? So the less your heart has to work, the better it is for your health. And of course, mobility and flexibility. This one could be just from a vanity perspective. I just really don't want anyone taking care of me. Well, I'm gonna practice flexibility and mobility training for the rest of my life. I just don't want to inconvenience anybody else. And I just wanna be independent. And I'm pretty sure anyone who wants to be independent, I'm gonna assume that most of the people here want to be very independent. And this is why I wanna make that case for you guys because I could say how great stretching is all I want, but it was gonna come down from you. And I think everyone just wants to be independent and able to do things. And that's why I think the importance of stretching is and mobility training is so important. Okay? Any questions on that? Okay. I touched a little bit on grip strength. Grip strength is a very interesting one because it's the directly proportional to your health and like how long you live. So the stronger your grip, generally according to the research, the longer you live, right? So ever had like an interview or you met someone and they kind of gave you like this like really kind of like weak handshake and it just instantly kind of turned you off, <laughs> right? Because like, just like you feel like, okay, this person, maybe not confident or maybe not very strong. So grip strength, don't crush people's hands by the way, but you know, firm handshake. The stronger your grip, the longer you live. Okay, yep. Because um, sure. I, I don't think stretching can prevent arthritis, can it? Um, and so yeah. arthritis tends to be almost genetic or it can be. just... Um, it can be. It depends on what kind it is. Certain things like rheumatoid arthritis, uh, sure, but a lot of them is uh, directly correlated to inflammation and food. So sometimes the food we eat can directly uh, make us more inflamed and causing that arthritis. So let's say if you eat like really high processed foods, that could also be uh, a factor as to why you might feel so much pain in your joints. But that could also be just the actual like ligaments and the bones. Like there's nothing, there's no cartilage left. So sometimes you might get that bone on bone. That could be just wear and tear. Uh, but generally speaking, the, the research is complete unanimous that your lifestyle and your food is a big proponent of it. Of arthritis, yeah. So it's like overwhelming. Uh, if anyone wants any of this research, I can send it to you. Um, yeah, like everything is basically your environment. So like, let's say for example, if there's a lot of pollution that could also affect it. If you eat like highly processed food, like sugar, like everything has sugar, right? So, but if you consume in copious amounts of that, that could lead to that as well. Um, and lack of, a, let's say like a healthy lifestyle. Let's say if you're not moving, that could also lead to joint stiffness as well. Does that answer kind of question a little bit? Yeah, in a way. In a way, so basically just lifestyle. So. The healthier you are, if you drink water and don't drink pop or anything like that. If you eat whole foods, preferably organic. I know it's expensive, but it's very good for you. Exercise, stretch, walk. It will significantly decrease that. Yep. But that all is fantastic, but mm -hmm. uh, if you're genetically predisposed to sure. arthritis, uh, that, that, that will help, but Correct. You know, it's the triangle. Correct. Genetics, food, environment. Correct. Uh, basically, the best way to think about it is like, go with things that you can control, right? So your genetics, I can't control my height. I would love to be taller. That would be amazing. You know, I'm all five foot seven. You know, <laughs> maybe five, six and a half. I would love to have some kind of like, you know, impact on my genetics, but I can't. But what I can't control is what I put in my own body, right? So, so like drinking water, I can control that instead of having alcohol or pop, right, like any kind of soft drinks. I can't control if I go to McDonald's or if I have like high quality chicken, right? So those things you can have control over, but you're absolutely right, it's a triple threat, right? So the best thing to do is just focus on things that are within your means of control and not stress about things that are not within your means of control, like arthritis or let's say cancers or some coronary artery disease, right? That could also be a factor as well. Any other questions? No, okay. Perfect. Okay, so tools to help you with your training, right? So again, let's assume you're clear to do any kind of stretching. Uh, you can't use uh, some of these stuff as well. Anyone familiar with these kind of tools? They look kind of foreign. Yeah? 
some of them. Yeah. So you can't see it here, but this is actually for your feet, right? So at the bottom of your foot, you have something called plantar vault. Sometimes people get plantar fasciitis, right? So unless your physio says you can do it, that would say do it. You could formal your feet, and you generally feel like really quite light and fluffy afterwards. So usually it's about 60 seconds. You can't go up to two minutes. Just very lightly apply pressure. You could do it uh, seated. You could do it standing. You could do it almost any muscle group. But again, muscles that are, or areas that avoid is like your cervical spine. Do not put a foam roller or a lacrosse ball in your neck, and uh, especially around the lumbar spine as well. Thoracic spine's okay. You can put it in your quads, hamstrings. Uh, it's, a, it's a small surface area, so apply as much pressure as you need. And that's what's called self myofascial because you uh, control the pressure. Whereas another therapist might apply them, but they need to be quite professional at what they do. Okay. Uh, there's some of these like weird looking things, like, you know, you can kind of pull it on it, you can kind of go into it. Uh, everything here is mostly for the feet. That's called a trigger point, which is like a slightly more advanced version of that one, and it's smaller. It's got little bumps and notches on it, so that can give you like a nice deeper stretch, help increase blood flow to the working area. Okay? Simple. For, for a grip, what do you use for a grip, you said? Oh, for grip, so that would do more like strength training, right? So this is mostly for stretching, stretching. right? So if you're looking for a grip, uh, simple things like even just like taking your groceries, right? Holding onto your groceries, let's say you walk with them, um, grabbing a pair of dumbbells, just hold on to it. There's other machines like a, a grip dynamometer you could kind of use to kind of get your grip stronger. But basically, any kind of grasping, you grasp anything that's moderately heavy and heavy subjective. So my heavy could be your lights and vice versa. So you use something that's relatively moderate or heavy, only if you're cleared again for exercise. I can also use uh, stretch, uh, jump stretch bands, like you might see those things on, uh, let's say if you go to Good Life, you might see those like purple bands people kind of carry around their shoulders and they use that. That's also a good way to stretch as well. You can apply any of those um, modalities with uh, a band as well. Okay. Whoop. Sorry. Okay. So, the benefit of strength training and stretching in concert, right? So, I spoke a lot about it. Let's just kind of read it right off the bat. First one, it makes you feel better and increases confidence, right? So, how many times can I tell you when I had a female client come in here and they immediately go towards the cardiovascular equipment? Uh, let's say like the elliptical or the bike or the uh, treadmill is because they don't feel confident in the gym. They feel like kind of like intimidated and they go into the gym with a trainer or with a therapist or with a physio and after like, you know, a couple of months they walk away feeling really good about themselves, feel very confident. Because again, we always go towards the cardiovascular machines because we know how to use it and it's really quite safe, right? And there's none of that intimidation factor. Second part, it just helps with mood, disposition, such as anxiety and depression. Uh, it will not eliminate it, it will help with it, right? So if you strength train and stretch, it releases a lot of uh, chemicals like endorphins, it makes you feel really good. Uh, increases strength, endurance, and body composition, obviously increases lean muscle tissue and bone density. Uh, who was doing the um, Aquafit? Was it someone over here? Yeah, Aquafit, like that's, that's a great way to increase bone density and muscle mass, right? Uh, helps reduce or eliminate chronic diseases, improve your skin, helps your brain, the memory recall, help you sleep, which is great, and most importantly, helps reduce pain. So if you have any kind of pain in your joints or your muscles, a uh, combination of strength training and uh, stretching will really help. Okay, pretty simple, right? Everyone knows that. We just don't apply it as often as we probably should, and everyone's guilty of that. Okay. So, how to get started, right? So, once we get into the floor, I'll tell you more in detail about different types of stretching, how long to hold it. I just want to give you a rough overview. So, how to get started? First thing, start with the path least resistance, right? If you think you can do dedicate 15 minutes of stretching, start with that. If you're clear to exercise and kind of strength training, start with that. If you think you can only do about 15 to 30 minutes of cardiovascular training, let's say just a steady state walk, do that. Then when you feel confident, then you can start adding more. Uh, obviously consult a physician or a doctor if you need any help, but that's pretty much it. Like, I just want you to be as very honest about it as possible. Uh, the more you do, the better it is for you. The better it is for your family and your disposition. The only thing I can say is be consistent. If everyone thinks they'll start tomorrow, you won't start tomorrow. Start today. <laughs> so hopefully when you guys leave today, maybe you'll do some of the stretching I showed you today and incorporate it to part of your daily routine, like your lifestyle. So I often compare it to uh, like brushing your teeth, right? So you have to brush your teeth, 
right? Because it's weird not to brush your teeth, right? So for me, I try to do something active every day, which is part of my normal lifestyle. Does that make sense? It's just very simple, right? Uh, and again, if you need any assistance, Weird Body and Soul will, will be happy to help you uh, get you get started in the right path. So this is the one thing we're gonna be doing on the floor. I just wanted to give you a rough overview of what it's gonna look like, right? So a lot of it can be seated, uh, a lot of it can be standing, there's different positions, depending on the group, we'll just kind of play it by ear, okay? Um, this is my email address, um, and if you have an Instagram account, if anyone wants, that's it right there. It's Greek for beauty and strength, because I'm right from that area. I'm kind of a nerd, I know. Like I said, I'm very boring. I'm not very, very, uh, yeah. And that's pretty much it for now. Uh, I'll take you guys on the floor. We'll talk about stretching more in detail. Okay. Thank you very much. So apologies for the, uh, the presentation. Again, it's ultra dull, so hopefully now that we're here, we can actually start moving around. Uh, someone said it couldn't hear me, so I'll try to project my voice as much as I can. I'm not shy, so it's all good. Uh, so a couple of people here already do chair yoga, if I recall. Anyone else here doing the chair yoga? Perfect. Anybody else? Okay. It's very similar to that. It's going to be ultra regress, like very simple stuff. Something you can do, you can walk away with it and not feel like... How do we do it again? So we try to make it as simple and as easy as possible. We're gonna start seated. We start from our neck, work our way down. I will give you guys options if you guys wanna stand, make it a little bit more challenging, so on and so forth, okay? So, who here actually stretches their neck? Is that like a weird, kind of, yeah, you stretch your neck? You? Perfect. Sometimes we don't stretch our neck enough and sometimes it gives us a, like a lot of neck pain, a lot of pressure headaches, uh, unable to actually go into a rotation, right? So we're gonna start there. So what Darren's gonna do, very simple, he's gonna bring his right ear to his right shoulder, right? So he's gonna get a nice stretch, okay? If you wanna get more of a stretch, this is where I meant that passive stretching, take your right hand, put it on top of your head, and you're gonna very gently pull it down, just very, very gently. Again, you should feel tension and not pain. We're gonna hold this for about 30 seconds, up to a minute if you guys want to, assuming you have no major injuries in your neck. Okay, hold it for a little bit longer. Okay, and then back to center. Okay, then of course you do the same thing, left ear to left shoulder. If you want more pressure, take your left hand, put it on top of the head, just very gently push it down. Okay, again, 30 seconds to a minute. You should feel a nice stretch on the one side of the neck. Okay. Back to center, okay. Now, we're gonna do a little bit of dynamic stretching. So, we're gonna tuck our chin down and into extension. Very slow, very controlled. Okay. It's a very simple exercise, very, very safe. So down and back up. Cool. So now, we're gonna do a full rotation, right? So this is more of dynamic, right? So you're gonna start from here, you're gonna very gently come all the way around back to center, all the way around, back to center. Pretty easy, right? It's, it's really not that hard, okay? Now, if you wanna make it a look, yep. You can go clockwise and counterclockwise, yeah, why not? <laughs> It'd be weird going just one direction, so you always go opposite way, okay? Next up, if you wanna get different parts of your shoulder, right, so while you're stretching that, so you're gonna bring his right ear to his right shoulder, right hand to the top. You can take your hand behind you very slowly and push down. You're gonna get a much deeper stretch right on the outside. Okay. Just very slowly. Yeah, what's that? I'll turn and grab the chair. Exactly, another one is gonna grab the chair. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, and of course you're gonna switch sides. There we go. If you can't quite reach around, you can just grab the chair and just hold on to it very lightly. Get a nice stretch there. Okay. Another one you guys have probably done is very simple shoulder stretch, right? So we're just gonna bring your hand right across, grab it at the elbow, and you're gonna very gently pull it towards you. Right? And the same thing, you're gonna hold it for about 30 seconds to a minute. We're not here to reinvent the wheel. It's all simple stuff. Simple but very, very effective. Okay, keep your arms straight if you can, just right across. Get your hand under, there we go, and then right across. 
Mm -hmm. Sure. Yeah. You're going to switch sides. Okay. Switch. There we go. You can walk right and help him if you want. Yeah, yeah. yeah, go for it. There we go. So right across. Do you have any questions? <laughs> exactly. Okay. Cool. So that's just the shoulders, right? So another one you can do is just basic chest stretch, right? Hands out to the side. You should feel a nice stretch. You can do it against the wall as well. Obviously, we can't hit each other, but it's a very easy one you can do. Another one you can do is a tricep, hand to the sky. Put it right down the back of your head if you can, and you're going to very gently push it up. Okay? Just a very gentle stretch. Nothing fancy. There we go. Feel that stretch, right? It's just a very gentle pressure. Don't go any more than that. You okay over there? All right. You're going to switch sides. Again, 30 seconds to a minute. You guys okay over here? Yeah. Does, it, okay. Yeah, if you have any injuries, don't do it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Perfect. Now, you can also do some rotational stuff as well. So you could be seated, help you get a lot more range of motion. Hands across. He's going to very gently turn to one side. Okay. Back to center. Turn. Back to center. Hmm? Exactly. Nice and tall. Okay. There we go. <laughs> okay. Perfect. Next one, we're going to focus more on the uh, the lower body, right? So you can have your one foot in front. Okay. If you want to get your calves, you can have your toes kind of flicked up a little bit, nice and tall. And all you're going to do is going to very gently push your body forward. You should feel a nice stretch somewhere. I'm not saying where. And just try to feel it out. Okay. There we go. So if you want to get more of your calf, you can have your toes up slightly. Ex exactly, yeah. So the more your toes are flicked up as you go into that stretch, you might feel the lower part of your leg, which is your calves. If you want to feel just your hamstring, straighten the legs out and toes forward, and you're going to feel mostly in the hamstring. Pardon me? You feel your back, yeah, that's why. So sometimes because the, the calf muscles innervate right into your back. So the best thing to do is just drop your leg, right? And then you're gonna feel, you should feel no pain, yeah. Switch sides for me. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Switch sides, again, if you wanna get the calf stretch, you can have your toes up. Perfect, okay. Does anybody stretch their glutes at all, their bum? No? A little bit? Okay. Another one. <laughs> Blank faces. I love it. Okay. If you can, if you can cross your leg over like this, please do so. If you feel that's really ch challenging, you can have your leg straight and just have it like so. Okay. What you can do is, again, very simply, take a nice deep breath, nice and upright. You're going to go into a stretch by leaning forward slightly. Exhale as you're coming down. If you don't feel a stretch, again, you can just pull your leg and bring it right towards your hip. Okay. So you should feel a stretch generally around the outside. You can have a bent, yeah. And if you want to actually kind of play around with it, you can actually torque it a little bit too. So you can actually turn it a bit more and you feel a deep, deep stretch on the opposite hip, yeah. right? Correct, exactly. And you could just very gently lean forward, right? You should feel a nice stretch. If you want to get more of a stretch, you can keep this knee bent. If you can, boat this one as well. I'm keep, sorry, I don't hear. Uh, keep this one bent, and then you can right. just lean forward, and you get a deeper stretch. All right, you're gonna switch sides. I should do the replacements and then do it. Yeah, don't do it. Don't do it. Yeah, smart. Is that good for my femur? This one, it, it depends. Um, because I've broken both my femur. Yeah, it's probably not good for you. <laughs> well, it's at the hip. Right, yeah. so the femur should be okay. Are you cleared to exercise? Cleared to exercise? Can you exercise? The doctor said you can exercise? I don't, never go, he never said anything. <laughs> oh, then there you go. <laughs> I, I love that, I like that, I like that. Okay, anyone got that one stretch okay? Pretty simple, right? Okay, another one we're gonna do. 30 seconds to a minute, all of them roughly. Uh, if someone is especially tight, let's say you're injured, you can do up to two minutes, roughly. Uh, it's all based on preference, but minimum 30 seconds to kind of get the elongation of the muscle. Okay, another one is going to have your leg back like so. Okay. 
and automatically you should feel just a little bit of a stretch at the front of that hip. Right? So he's going to hold that again for about 30 seconds to a minute and then we're going to go up into our standing series. We can do all of these standing, we can do kneeling, we can do it on your back, you can do it on your belly. Every one of these stretches we can do in almost any position. We start with this one first because it's the most safest and then we can always go to deeper stretches as well. Are Switch you, legs. Are you leaning forward or trying to... I'm quite upright, right? And I'm leaning forward slightly with my hip. You're just going to feel a nice stretch. It's squatting back you? No, not at all. <laughs> not at all. It, it depends. It depends on the individual. So if you... We used to get punishment as children. <laughs> Me too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Me too. Squat for hours. <laughs> just kind of, just kind of held in a hell position the whole time. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> the whole time for, for two hours. Really? Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. So we're actually going to be. Uh, if people are comfortable, we could do it standing, so we can get our quads and our hamstrings right. So if you guys are comfortable standing, please do so. So I'm just going to intervene on this one. Yep. I don't want to have to pick anybody up off the floor. Okay, so we know that we've just been shown we can do great stretching on the on the chair, right? And we can also do good stretching standing up. So if your balance is not great, hold on to it. Continue to do it. Either hold on to the chair or just repeat the sitting ones. You guys know that we do this in our cardiac program. Exactly. Right? We do the stretching. We've got standing versions for all of our stuff. And we've also got seated versions as well. All right. So if you're worried at all about your balance, please mm -hmm. by all means stay sitting. Okay. Exactly. Okay. So case in point, if you guys have a hard time with your balance, I would definitely hold on onto a wall. These are very easy things to do. Okay. Yeah. So we're gonna do a demonstrate the seated version. Mm -hmm. um, what what stretch you do? Oh, yeah, sure. Okay. So a seated version is you're gonna be seated like so. He's gonna kind of grab your leg and just gonna hold that position, right? So you're gonna get the quad. Right, so it's just a very nice and upright. This is a very simple stretch, very similar to the other one. Uh, a standing version is same thing, just gonna have your hips in line. You're gonna very gently grab your foot and try to hold your feet together. Okay, take your time, so, especially in jeans. Idea. I'm 50 now, I'm gonna be challenged to get my legs. <laughs> no oh, you go, girl. You go, girl. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You just want to grab it nice and tight so you can tell people are really tight there here. Once you get more range of motion, you can hold it there. Yeah. Exactly. We're going to switch legs. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Okay. So we're going to switch legs again about 30 seconds to a minute. Just to save every one time, we're going to hold it for 30 seconds. So it's a very simple stretch, right? Nothing fancy. Can use is roll, yes, sir. Roll well or a when you say 30 seconds to a minute, mm -hmm. is that like once? That's once, yeah, you do it twice. That, that's Gen generally, you do it twice. Do, so, you like you do a set of two? Correct, okay. correct. So, total time uh, uh, stretching should be like between a minute to two minutes max. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Yeah. And just grab what you can. Exactly right. I believe any exercise should be done Well. I'll agree with you on some of that stuff, right? It depends on the person, right? Well, if, and their ability. This person, I like that. <laughs> okay, so everyone's done there. Okay, so next one is gonna be a basic hamstring stretch, right? Same thing. So exactly what I showed you earlier, you could hold on to it or it could be nice and tall, toes up. Okay, you're gonna very slowly hinge forward, put a lot of pressure on that hamstring. Make sure you exhale as you come down. Okay, you're gonna hold that position. That's it. If you want to get your calf, you can have your toes pointed. If you just want to get the hamstring, have your foot flat to the floor. Just going to lean forward, nice and tall, and switch. And breathe. Breathing is actually very, very important, especially in yoga. I right? teach a lot about breathing. There we go. We're going to switch sides. Hamstring is right here. If you want your, if you want your calf, toes up. What's a hamstring? Hamst hamstring, right here. Uh, but you get both stretches, so yeah, you get both stretches, yeah. You got it. Okay, you guys good over here? 
tense. It's way more tense, yeah. So that's why sometimes people have a hard time moving because the calf is so tight. That's why people have a hard time squatting, usually because the calves. So if you stretch those, you're going to feel a lot better. Okay? Okay. All right, everyone good with that one? Okay. Next one, we're going to stretch top of our hip, right? Kind of integrate towards our back. You're going to be in a split stance position. Okay. You're going to drop your heel, right? And you're going to very slowly push your hip forward. Nothing fancy. Try to have your pelvis slightly tucked back, and you're going to feel a stretch right in the front of that hip. Okay. There we go. <laughs> exactly. So what I want you to do is kind of slightly slight bend, yeah, and just push a little forward. There we go. Exactly. Yeah, you got it. You got it. There we go. Yeah, you got it. So think of the pelvis kind of rolling slightly backwards, and you should feel a huge stretch in the front of that hip. Okay. The psoas muscle. A lot of people feel a lot of back pain. It's a good stretch to kind of alleviate that pain. We're gonna switch sides. It's pretty much a last stretch, nothing fancy. Yeah. Okay, we're gonna. Yeah, exactly. There we go. Okay, you guys are pretty good here. Yeah, so the pelvis, nice and tall for me. There we go. And you're gonna hinge back. Okay. Good. This one is actually like very effective if you do it properly, but it just looks like you're just standing, right? So if you just really focus on actually getting the front of that hip. Usually, it's very, very effective. Okay. Why would my knee hurt? On this one? Yes. Knee hurts. Yeah. Like I went down like that, and I'm supposed to. You're not leaning forward. You're actually leaning backwards. I'm leaning backwards. Yeah, so you're leaning okay, back. Okay, that's what I turned. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, because you're leaning forward, right? No, that's a, I, I corrected myself. Thank you. Look and at I, you. Uh, no, I'm sorry. The knee hurts. Don't do it. Don't do I'm it. I'm going to do it on my seat. Absolutely. I Absolutely. There we go. All right, guys. How are you feeling? You feeling okay? You feeling okay? Good. There we go. So you want to be up nice and straight and tall, and that's where you feel a little bit of a pull. Do I exactly. Got it right? Absolutely. Exactly. It's a basic like so as stretch. Nothing. Yeah. Yeah, it works. Okay. All right. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Well, do you have any handouts to take home? Yes. Uh, I, I didn't bring it with me, but I have I have my email, so I can send you a handout with all the information on there. I can email okay. them out to everybody. Exactly. Yes, they're all sending them to me. And okay. So I had a very good question here. Uh, will there be handouts? And the answer is yes. Uh, I didn't bring them with me because uh, for some reason my computer was not working. Apologies for that, but I will uh, send the information right over. If anyone wants that information with like images, how long to stretch for, uh, different muscle groups, frequency, how often you should be stretching, I can send information right away and you can have that with actual images as well of start and end positions. So you don't have to kind of think like, what did he say? So you can have all that information right there. Okay? Is there any questions? So, that, again, I, I didn't want to reinvent the wheel. These movements you've done before, it just you probably never started with your neck. You can actually work your way down to your feet as well. That's why we like to use the ball as well. If you, if you have a lacrosse ball, a tennis ball, it's really great for your feet. Okay, now you're just showing off. I like it. <laughs> Killing time. I like it. Okay. Does anyone have any like burning questions? Anything that they wanted to ask me that I haven't quite covered yet? Because it went kind of quick. Yep. When you used to foam roller. Mm -hmm. I, I find if I use it like on the back of my legs, mm -hmm. that it's quite painful. It can be. Yeah. Yep. Um, should you stop at that point or should you keep rolling on it? It depends. Uh, how, how much pain are we talking about? Scale 1 to 10. Like 3 or 4 is like an annoyance. Like it's like, I wouldn't call it comfortable. Ooh, 8. Okay. It's, pre it's, pre it's pretty severe, right? So you, you should never like foam roll to the point of that much pain. Uh, we can show you some regressed versions of it. So maybe look, only do half, only do one leg at a time. Uh, and it just might not be right for you at the moment. Right, yeah. I have a question. So the best time to exercise probably is in the morning after you have a shower and your body's warm. Yep. But if you decide to go for a walk later in the afternoon, mm -hmm. should you stretch a little bit before you go for a walk for 30 minutes? You can, so if the walk, 
was the question I can't hear it over here? Uh, the question was, I, I told her that the best time to stretch is after a shower, right? So when your body is nice and warm. So if you want to stretch, you can do that. The second question was, uh, should she stretch uh, before a walk, let's say in the evening? Yeah. Okay, so it's a very good question. So you should which kind of stretch should you do? Static is always the best. Uh, it's this gold standard, so health positions, right? So very gentle, stretch the muscles themselves. Uh, I'd recommend you actually go for your walk and then stretch when you come back. Oh. Yeah, because you, your body needs to be warm to stretch, right? So if you stretch while you guys are cold, there'll be more chance of injury. So I would go for a walk, then you can come back, you're nice and warm, you're probably a little sweaty, uh, and then you can stretch afterwards for about, let's say, two minutes per body part. Uh, Darren and Errol and Scott. other guy, Scott, yeah. Scott, they will stay out here. So if you have any other personal one-on-one -on -one questions, they're happy to stay out here yeah. and answer some questions for a little bit. Otherwise, thank you very much, Errol, Darren, and Scott from Body Soul. Thank you very much.